killed more than 15 people in California. Okay. They only got nine. They only got nine because I only gave them nine names. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm um, 15 people in front counties, Riverside, Kern County, Santa Barbara, and Tulare County. But I have to save something for the future. Okay. I wasn't going to sit there and tell them everything I have done in my life. So I got more body spending in California. Buenos Dias Gunners Collective. Back at it. Ba -da -ba 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 -ba. You already know, man, like a motherfucking smack addict, right? And as you can tell by today's thumbnail, yes, indeedy, I wrote graffiti on that bus. We're going to get into something just a little bit different in a minute. on a direct fashion. I'm bringing you guys a profile, one of the most prolific hitters ever as a Latino. This Vato, and I'm not trying to put no shine on his name, and I'm not trying to say what he did was righteous, and what he did wasn't. You know what? I can't call it like an alcoholic. At the end of the day, all you can do is fill me up with and let it. I'll take a dub. And it'd be like that sometimes. I don't know why this man did what he did. Whatever he chose to do was in his own mentality. It was in his own mentality. But he did it, man. And, of course, he plays an intricate part into the history of Chicanoism because he was a Latino, a Mexicano, or a Chicano. At the same time, I can't call it what he was. But I know he was of Latin descent. And he chose to take this on his plate and run with it. So we're talking about one Jose Manuel Martinez, El Mano Negra, right? And for those of you that don't know, that means the black hand. Now, it's an old Sicilian proverb. It's an old Sicilian saying, which means death, okay? Which means a such <laughs> you don't want to see that on no type of level. And, you know, a lot of people have used that derivative and they have used that saying uh, for their own organization or their own people. And we're going to leave it at that. But this has nothing to do with down sued. This has nothing to do with up north. What this has to do with is one individual's way of thinking and the true thoughts and the true mentality of a true psychopath. Okay. Um, Jose Martinez. And the name strikes me funny because I actually got a homeboy from Sanjo. You know who you are, man, with the same exact name. So the name stuck in my head. It leaked off the page to me when I started to do my research and my due diligence into this story. And I said, Sasuke, watch out. Good Lord, man. Straight killers. All of them, you know, with that name. Um, but at the same time, in the meantime, in between time, um, I just wanted to bring you guys a story about this. Um, La Mano, El Mano Negra, um, the black hand. And this is what he proclaimed. This is what he called himself, meaning he was bringing death to those. Now, this guy has claimed over 40 murders. OK, he got body for body, but 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 body for body. He got bodies everywhere in multiple states, multiple counties within the uh, state of California, multiple cities, you know, um. This man's mentality, after sitting down and listening to a few of a few interviews that were conducted with him, he wasn't too in touch with reality, but at the same time, this guy was a true savage about what he did. He was a true warrior, didn't a hey, loose lips never sank ships with him. He refused to get up give up contacts. He refused to put anything on anyone else's plate. He totally took the blame. Now, this man had a killing spree that spanned over four decades. Okay, and the reason I'm even telling you guys about this, about those Sasuke, watch out, respects, because I don't want, hey, Sasuke, I don't want to see you on no level, man. I'm just being real. I'm being honest. I'm not being scary. What I'm being is righteous when I say, um, this Vato, um, plays a big part into the Latino community because he was someone that nobody wanted to see. He was a very dangerous individual that continued to do his thing for over four decades, and nobody was the wiser. Nobody even knew what the Vato was doing. Sasuke, the Vato was in this motherfucker like, don't, 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 I got him. You know what I mean? He had plenty of different ways to do what he did, and this was his profession. He took it pretty serious, man, and he did what he did. Um, he crossed all his T's and dotted all his I's. Put it like that, this guy did what he did um, on, a, on the highest level. So, uh, La Mano Negra, okay, or El Mano Negra, this guy comes from Tulare County, you know, his, he was stationed at Early Martin, for those of you that don't know what Early Martin is, it's a small little farm town in Tulare County, not a lot of people outside Tula County really know about it, I do, I met plenty of authors from there that were true hitters, that were really in the game, and um, they're down, you know, they're down, whether it be on some gang shit or just Rasa style, you know, down for their people. Early Mart ain't producing no suckers, man. Early Mart is producing some real righteous individuals from my retrospect, from the way that I look back on it. Every bottle that I met from Early Mart just had a little bit of thug in them, right? And that's just what it was. And if you fuck around in Early Mart and you ain't the righteous one, you catch a little bit of slug in you. That's just how it be like that out there. 
Um, but in a menudo style, this bottle, this individual, one Jose Martinez was out there wiggling and nobody knew it. You know, those around him that were privileged enough to know what he was doing and what he was capable of weren't going to say anything anyways because they didn't want to end up on the other side of that 22. They said, fuck that, so scared. You want, you want to see the 22, Charlie? You talking about burpees? No, nah, I ain't talking about no burpees. Well, so I ain't, I ain't, my name's Bennett and I definitely ain't in it. Um, but like I said, he had a killing spree that um, basically went out for four decades and he eluded the police. You know, in his own words, the police were just not bright enough to catch him. He left clues. He left indications. And that he was under several suspicions of several murders. You know, don't get it twisted. Don't act like the, the, the officers were not doing their due diligence and their job to try to find out who this individual was. Because he was leaving several body, bodies in these orange coves. He would take them out in the country basically and whack them for various reasons. Now, of course, there's been plenty of speculation out there that he was a hired hitman for one organization or another. But at the same time, I won't speak on that because I can't call it like an alcoholic. You know what? Um, it's better left unsaid and it's none of mine or your business. If you want to think that way, if that's one of your fucking mindsets and you're like, maybe he was doing it at the benefit of these people for fatty or whatever, then you go ahead and do your research, man, and come up with your own formulation, plot and plan and your own assumption of what he was doing. But me, for the most part, man, I'm going to keep those organizations that they said he could have been doing it for out of my mouth because it's not my business. And so I'm not promoting that. But at the same time, um, he was a very prolific killer. This man killed in a lot of various different ways. You know, strangulation, shooting, stabbing, just looking at motherfuckers, bad breath. Whatever it may be, man, motherfuckers was falling out left and right. And he did this over a long span of time. You know, he's under suspicion as we speak. And he's incarcerated right now um, for several more murders. You know, he gave up nine. He basically got convicted of nine, and that's actual and factual. He told on himself, no one caught him. They didn't do an investigation and land at his doorstep. So I you're the one. You know what I mean? And he's like, Charlie. None of that. He actually walked himself into the police station and admitted it. Now, there's a reasoning behind that. Um, there was the last murder that he did, so we know, um, was a 20-year-old man. And they found him out, of course, on the Orange Cove in Tulare County. And the suspicion centered around his grandkid, his granddaughter. Now, anyone that knew this man, and there's a lot of people that did, you know, a lot of eyewitnesses that they talked to, they investigated, you know, when they, when all this came to pass. And everyone said he was a, a loving, doting grandfather, father, um, was just your average everyday guy. They thought, of course, he was a little standoffish. He was a little bit different. But at the same time, and everyone in this world usually minds their own business and let a man be a man. And that's what they were doing. Um, so he didn't stand out as some fucking top of the line ice killer, fucking in, ice running through his veins type individual. Nothing like that. What he stood out as is just a doting grandfather that was actually good and a family working man. Um, but little did they know. Bang, bang. You know, shit goes on on the late night. You know what I mean? Order the Count Dracula. He comes out and it's not Count Chocula, it's Count Dracula in a real fashion. This motherfucker was doing big things. Bang, bang. All right. Uh, shit that knew, me, neither me nor you want to be part of. Um... But this is how the people looked at him, you know, from the outside looking in. Yay, yay, this is how they looked. Um, so what happened was this murder just got a little too close to home and they started to center their investigation around one of his grand grandkids, his granddaughter. And of course, the type of individual he was, he didn't believe in letting his family take the blame or the fall for nobody. That wasn't in his DNA. That wasn't his makeup. He wasn't cut from that cloth. So this man actually walked himself into the Tulare County Police Station, sat down and said, hey, guess what? I got nine of them for you. They were like, who did it? He said, I did, bitch. Right? And in that fashion, and started to proceed to tell these tales and these exact, he gave them exact placements, exact spots, exact motivations behind it, all the reasons why it was done. And they knew he did it because he knew things that in this investigation that not your average everyday Joe would know. OK, and that's pretty much how they get these killers, um, because these killers have know the intricate details into what actually transpired, because I'm scared they were there that night. Right. And the wind was blowing and it was cold. Um, anyway, so he started to go into detail. And of course, they charged him with these for which he was found guilty and sentenced to life without the possibility of parole. Now, of course, 
having several interviews with certain newscasters and people that wanted to write books. And there's several books written about this individual and just a lot of things. People want to always get into the mind state of what they call a serial killer, a psychopath, a social, a sociopath, a social, what is it? A sociopath, something like that. Bang, bang. You know what I mean? I'm not that smart, but I'm not that dumb either. Um, people always want to delve into the mind of someone that ain't just like them. You know, but it's lurking inside everybody. Everybody got a little psychopath in them. You just need to release that shit sometimes. Bang, bang, manual. Um, but not everyone, uh, not everyone understands it. You know, it's an anomaly. It's something that's not quite understood in civilized society. Um, but it's something people are very interested in, and that's the reason why you're watching this video right now. See, bang. I know what I'm saying. Um, but this individual um, was very charismatic. During the interviews, he was a lovable, huggable type of guy. He was a type of individual that he didn't give a fuck. He showed no emotion to what he did. He knew what he did wasn't warranted in society as a great thing. He knew exactly what he was. He called himself, and these are his own words, a hired hitman that killed several individuals because they deserved it. He said every individual, he didn't kill civilians. He definitely had a thing against harming women, children, and elder people. Um, he didn't believe in any of that. What he believed in was... If you were in the game, if you were part of the fucking dope game or part of whatever he was into and you didn't pay your debts or you didn't fucking wiggle, you took a left when you should have made a right or whatever the case may be, then Sasuke, your time was up when you met him because the hand was for real. And this is why he called himself because when you met him, it was pretty much a rap a lap against it was over, game over, one, two, three strikes, you're out, right? What are the Terry Steinbach? Some real shit. So this Vato, um, Gets convicted of these murders. And of course, uh, he starts telling his tale, telling his story. And it gets, it, it goes national. You know, there's national news behind it. Um, it's generating a lot of, he said, she said, a lot of wondering, damn, what was going through the mind of this individual? And I'm going to tell you what was going through the mind of this individual. Because it came out of his own mouth. Money. Money was the motivation. You know, he got paid handsomely for, for the murders he did. And some of these murders he did just because the guys pissed him off. You know, it was cold that day. So was good. he didn't have a jacket. And man, he had a hack it. And bang, bang. Or a hatchet. Mm. You know? And that's just what it was. But at the same time, man, I don't condone none of this. And I'm not standing behind it saying it was a good thing for him to do. He should have went out there and hit people. But this is his story. And I'm just here to help tell it. Um, he was a true believer in his cause. He was a true believer in doing the job and doing it right. And that's what he said. He said, I killed them all. When they asked him, they said, how many did you kill? All of them. But sir, is, did, did you have any help? A bitch, I did it all. You know what I mean? So don't take none from me, you know, because I got nothing but love for me, baby. I got nothing but love. He had love for himself, and he truly believed and stood behind and stood on his ten toes behind um, the foundation he set forth for these murders and what he did. That's just it. Now, do I think that sane, a sane way of thinking is something? Charlie, right? I wouldn't admit to it, but at the end of the day, man, this man, like I said, stands on his own and stands apart from the rest because he doesn't want anyone to get the credit for what he did. And basically, he doesn't want anyone to go down or be punished for something they didn't do. He did it. He realizes that um, the morality of the situation is he doesn't give a fuck. You know what I mean? He has no emotions either, neither here nor there. At the end of the day, man, in his own words, they deserved it. They got what they had coming to him because they were living that life. And when you're living that life, hey, life's a risk, carnal. You know what I mean? And that's what it was. They got negro and straight up, he handled it. Um, but he's also been, since then, the subject of many investigations. Of course, once they know, the blackers start looking at different patterns, different way things are done, and you start getting popped for everything. And as we're speaking right now, he's got a case going on in Alabama where they're trying to knock him out the box over there in that state for a murder that they've linked him to. Of course, this being the type of man he is would say if he did it or not. He don't give a fuck, man. That's just the type of individual he was. Like I said, he's one of the most prolific killers, uh, Latino killers in American history. Um, and it's crazy that he's from Tulare County because I got a lot of good, solid loved ones out of Tulare County that are righteous. They're like, damn, I want to doing it like that. Yes, indeed, he was. He wrote graffiti all over that motherfucker. You know what I mean? He was all up in by some photos. Uh, London to la, oh my, you know what I mean? He was doing his thing, but especially early Mark. Um, so trip out. They try to get this ball on that or that he's going through the motions with that. And of course he says, Charlie, I, I had nothing to do with Alabama. I wasn't out there trying to be no Razorback. I didn't have nothing to do with that. I wasn't being no Crimson Tide or whatever the case may be, man. I had fucking nothing to do with that. And, uh, he's standing by that. Now, of course, 
just like every other state, they want to link someone to something. They're trying to get them also in Florida. Now, there's a reasoning why they're trying to get them in Florida. The reasoning behind it is Florida, for those of you that don't know, has the death penalty and likes to use it. They're like the state of Texas. They use that shit. You know what I mean? They ain't going to let the taxpayer money just sit there. They are using it, and they use it swiftly and quickly. And their whole thing is to get this man charged on a murder over there, get him convicted with the capital punishment so that way they can kill him. Okay, now I'm going to be honest with you, ladies and gentlemen. 40 plus murders, 50 murders he says he did, um, for which he's admitted to nine and won't give him the names on the others because he has his own diabolical plan. He has his own reasoning behind what he's going to say, when he's going to say it in his time. Time's on his side. Um, but they're going to stay on him. They're going to stay on his headpiece. Now, does he deserve capital punishment? I'm sure the familias and my condolences to all the families, man, whose lives were touched by this individual truly believe some of them. Fuck, get them, right? So let's hang them, um, get a rope. You know what I mean? They truly believe in this shit. Um, but he also has a family. You know, and that's that's the catastrophic part of anything, any type of crime that gets committed, isn't it? is you're not thinking when you're doing it about how it affects your family, how it affects all those around you, how it affects the community as a whole, the nation, people in general. Um, everything that you do leaves a mark in this world. And he left several marks, you know? Um, so there's a lot of familias out there that are still grieving to this day. You know, their, their, their son, their father, their mother, their brother, their sister, or whatever the case may be. He never killed women, the Spensa Latira, or children. Um, and I'm going to tell you the story about the reasoning behind that. But anyways, he um, it affected them, you know, and it continues to affect their lives. So one can only wonder, you know, uh, what they're going through and their feelings behind the situation. And also his family, his grandchildren, his daughters, his sons or whoever he may have had in his life, his significant other also are feeling the repercussions for his actions. They never knew. Of course, they interviewed his family and they said, hey, Sasuke, could you tell? Could you tell? So I know you had to fuck the two, but could you tell? And they said, nah, he was a doty loving person. You know, his business was his business. He would pay the rent of all the neighbors around him when he had Fedia. He would give his last dollar to people. He was that type of individual. So you want the shirt off my back? Simone, fuck it. You know what I mean? If you're giving it up, he would give you his last food stamp. But at the end of the day, if you didn't give him a food stamp back, he'd fuck around blowing shit off, right? That's just the type of guy he was. His mentality is not my mentality, so I can't sit here and profess to know exactly what goes to the, the mind state of an individual like that or, or, or him, period, because I'm not him. Um, what I do know is what I've heard and what I've researched and what I've looked into, and I can tell you pretty much, this author was nothing to be played with. He stated that everyone around him knew, those that were to know, who exactly who he was and what he was about, and they didn't want none of that fucking action. They wanted no smoke, put it like that. Um, and then he also admitted that a lot of people um, didn't know, you know, for those that didn't know, that's probably a good thing, man. It would be hard to to know someone like this is around you daily. You know, maybe you can try. I can't trust it. Da, 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 da. I can't trust it. You can't trust some shit like that. You don't know what kind of day this guy's having. If the chorizo in his huevos is cold, man, you know, what I mean, your chorizo might be cut off. You just can't call it like an alcoholic. At the end of the day, this is what this man was doing. Now, he never touched a woman and children because he was a firm believer and we are here to protect our women. And anyone who did anything heinous to women, man, this man actually hunted them down and did bad things to them. Okay. As far as children goes, anyone that's in the game, anyone that's living in this world, man, that's about that gang life or about that, the hitter life or whatever the case may be, man, already knows uh, children are off limits. They should be. Now, those that do things to children will suffer. Oh, they will suffer, right? And that's their thing, and we'll leave it like that, and hopefully um, they handle it. But um, this was not his style, you know? Also, um, the art of informing or telling was not his style. Now, everyone plays has their own lifestyle. Everyone gets caught up in certain situations and does what they does, and I'm not here to slander anybody, period, plain and simple. That's not me. Um, but I will say that this guy stood, stood 10 toes down, did not give him nada. They said, who hired you, bitch? Who fired you? <laughs> Why'd you do it? Because I wanted to. This is how he was. This is his mentality. I've seen several interviews with you, and he actually looked very charismatic and looked like the type of individual you would be sold up with and then find out that he has 40, 50 bodies under the room and be like, guard! So I don't like his shoes. I don't like his pants. He's trying to take off his pants, right? And trying to get the fuck up out of there. You don't want no part of that. Uh, but at the end of the day, um, 
He's one of the most prolific hitters ever to be in the state of California. Now, a lot of people maybe got more bodies. A lot of people maybe did it more heinously, more grisly. But at the end of the day, this touches me and touches the community of the Latinos closely because he was one of our own. And he looked like he could be my tío. He looked like tío Tupaca. You know what I mean? You just don't know. You just never know. And I know Tulare County was impacted. You know, Tulare County, um, a lot of people like to look at it as a farming community. It's not. There's a lot of real motherfuckers doing real things, man. There's cities. They might be more, a little bit more spread out. But at the end of the day, man, don't take nothing from Tulare County, man, because motherfuckers is out there getting their wiggle on. And in that fashion, not even in a gang member as, uh, a fashion. I'm just talking about in a person-to-person in a person, a person fashion. People are out there really wiggling. The crime rate is crazy. It is what it is. But there's a lot of hard workers in a big Latino community. You know, the, for the majority of, of, of Tulare County is Latinos. Um, and there's Vatos from there. So I know it was fucking something going crazy in Tulare County when they heard about this. You know, who the fuck is an early mark killing 50 people? Well, guess what? La, uh, El Mano Negra was, you know, and it's crazy. Anyways, at the end of the day, it's a story that you should look into. I think it's a story that everybody should pay attention to. And he's one of the most prolific, like I said, uh, hitters in American history from the Chicano or the Mexicano culture. And it's just something we have to live with, gente. It's not very common, but it happens. And I commend this individual, the way he stood, stuck to his grind. And I commend um, the way his familia stands behind him. But I also send condolences to all the familias that were touched. And do I think by any means, man, uh, any of this was warranted? Charlie, you know, death and pain and, and suffering is never warranted, but it happens unless you're a weirdo and it's warranted like a motherfucker. You know what I mean? Bang, bang. And that's just what it is. With that being said, man, I hope that you move fast with a purpose. I hope that you go out there and get everything that you want coming to you. Remember, at the end of the day, it's all about struggling and striving for your people. If you got to go kill someone, so I, get, I ain't the one to say do it or don't do it. I'm just saying, don't admit it. You know what I mean? Bang, bang. The gun. You know what it is. Like and subscribe. If you don't like this, Hit that thumbs down. Heavy is the head that wears the crown, but I got to do what I have to do. Bang, bang.